cool. What's up folks, it's Devin here with Make Anything and the folks at banggood.com sent me a little tiny laser engraver. This thing normally costs something like 80 or 90 bucks, which is about as cheap of a laser engraver as you can find. And you know, sometimes I like to try out the cheapest of the cheap just to see if it can do anything, you know? If something's cheap, that's not a problem as long as it works. So today we're gonna see if we can get this thing up and running, how long that takes, and then we're gonna try to laser engrave some little miniature dice. I thought that would be a fun little project, good way to test this thing out. I already took it out of the box, but I haven't actually taken a look at everything, so let's go ahead and do that. Oh yeah, we got some cool glasses to protect from the laser. I think I'm just gonna wear these for the rest of the review. So in this little bag, we've got the laser, some screws and a screwdriver. There's a flash drive that might have some instructions or I don't know if this is powered by USB or how you get the file in there. So it looks like it connects by mini USB. Ah, yeah, here's the cable. And some pieces of cardboard, some pieces of balsa wood, just for sample printing, I guess. I mean, this machine looks simple enough. I like the design of this thing. It's a nice matte finish and it's got these cute little buttons. They remind me of a Super Nintendo or something. And if you check out the plate here, it's got all these ridges, and I guess you use rubber bands just to hold down the material. It's got this test print on it, which looks really clean. So if I can get prints that clean, and if I can do it consistently, and if I can line things up, those are kind of the main things that I want out of this. All right, there's a fan here as well. It's wrapped up. All right, well, the manual is written with that standard broken English that you get from a lot of Chinese products. Uh, I really like how the very first notice is, this is a desktop laser carving machine for home use, cannot be compared with the machine for industrial use. Lowering expectations right on the first page. <laughs> it also says that the machine can only run for around 25 minutes at a time. I don't know how slow it takes to actually burn the designs here, so considering the size of this, hopefully that doesn't affect the ability to create certain designs, we'll see. All right, they say it can cut wooden objects, organic glass, that's kind of surprising. Corian, paper, double color board, leather, resin, metal spray, etc. And you gotta use their software, which is Windows only, so sorry Mac users. The instructions are pretty limited. Basically, you have to turn the little focus ring on the laser to make sure that it's focused on the height of whatever objects you're carving. And the rest of these instructions are just for the software. We'll figure that out. All right, I guess before we do that, we should just screw in this laser. I wouldn't consider this a kit. It's pretty much already assembled. It only uses two of the four screws. Okay. So I'll just throw that in like there and then drop a screw. <laughs> Mandatory. You always want to drop a screw. Oh, how Okay, drop two screws, maybe. That's why they provide four. You do not want to drop three screws. Drop two, but don't drop three. Retrieve those. There we go. Got it. <laughs> Through here? Yes. All right, plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in. This episode is brought to you by whatever commercial that used to be. All right, so now that I've got that laser machine pretty much set up, I just need to cut some wooden cubes for my dice. So I set up the fence on my table saw, and I just cut in every direction. And you want to make sure to use a push block if you're cutting something tiny like this on the table saw. Next, I sanded the cubes down to get rid of that frayed wood on the edges, and to try to make the dimensions as square as possible. I mean, these are really just test dice. I don't need them to be perfect, but you know, I want things to look good. I'll round the corners as well, and then we've got some nice cubes. So next I need to design the pattern that's gonna be on these dice. So I'm gonna do that in Illustrator, setting the width and height to 19.5, which is about the dimensions of those dice. Next, I'm gonna create this rectangle a bit smaller than that, so there's a border, just so I don't have to line things up perfectly. I'm gonna make this the number one. 
and then I'll add some lines. Try to create an interesting geometric pattern. Something that you wouldn't see on your ordinary pair of dice. That's the whole reason we're making these custom, you know? You gotta do something special. So I like the look of this. It's simple and it can be expanded for all the different numbers. I'm gonna make each number a little unique. I'll put a ring of white around that dot just to make everything a little easier to read. And then I'm gonna export that as a ping file. And I'm not sure what resolution I need to bring this into the other software for it to be correctly scaled. But let's try out screen resolution first, and we'll optimize this for art. So we'll hit OK, and now we're going to start trying out this laser cutter. I'm going to test it out on one of the pieces of cardboard first before I probably ruin one of my wooden dice. So I'll just twist that laser to focus, and it's pretty easy to do with those glasses on. You can really look at the laser beam and make sure the point is as small as possible. So I'll drag in my image and click Carving Preview Box which causes the laser to basically trace the area of the image. So as you can see, it's a really small box. So my image was not brought in at the correct scale. For this test, I'll just magnify it in the software, even though that's kind of messing up the quality of the image. But you can see the new preview box is larger since I scaled that image up. So let's go ahead and just hit start and see what happens. So as you can see on the bottom, there is a carving time slider, and my laser was actually burning through the cardboard, so I have to bring that way down. So let's try it around 50 milliseconds. So since we've got that more or less figured out, we can go ahead and move to the dice. I 3D printed this little die holder to hold everything in place on the laser machine, and I'll stick some little bits of cardboard in the side to make sure it doesn't wiggle around. And then I can use the rubber bands on the edges here to hold everything in place. I just cross them over like this, and that does a decent job of holding everything down. Back in Illustrator, I designed the other five sides of the dice, and you can see they're all very unique, but I think they have a similar feel that they'll look good together. So now I can export those, and as long as I have Use Artboards selected on the bottom, it'll automatically save all of those into separate images. This time I'm going to set my resolution to high, and hopefully that'll make a nicer quality image. So I'll bring that in, and sure enough, it's larger, and it looks a lot better. And I did a few more sample prints to fine tune everything, and it came out really well. And the scale is correct now that I exported the images from Illustrator at 300 pixels per inch. I'm going to refocus the laser now, and then I can use that carving preview box and just kind of move the thing around until it seems well centered. Then I'm going to go ahead and burn it in. I think I was still using a power of something like 50 millisecond carving time. And it took about 10 minutes at that speed and it came out really nice and dark. The image quality is fantastic. If only I had aligned it a little better. <laughs> So I'm going to make some modifications to my little dice holder. I'm going to glue down this little square of neoprene that I cut down to the bottom of this dice holder. And that'll make sure it really doesn't move once I have it in place on the laser cutter. I'm also going to use a straight edge and a pencil to mark the center of the dice. And I'm also going to draw a little 90 degree angle here on the side of the dice, which will help me align that uh, preview box. So with the laser set to the center of the image, I can now move the laser dot to line up at that X. And then when I press the preview box, I can make sure it follows those edges that I drew out. And once that looks good, it's time for another attempt. I don't know if it was a slight difference in the height of the laser or if the wood is different or something, but the strength of the laser wasn't quite enough. So I had to do it twice. But my second pass came out really great, and as you can see, the alignment is much better than my first attempt. I also realized you can use those little buttons on the front of the laser cutter to adjust the center point, which also helps with alignment. So with all those little things worked out, I now have a pretty good system for lasering those images onto the dice and having them be nicely aligned and everything. And after I'm done, I can just erase those pencil marks I made at the beginning. 
Now check out these super cool and totally unique dice that I have. I just love how they came out. The contrast between the wood and the laser is awesome. Here I printed out a tiny Make Anything logo to basically see the smallest amount of detail that I can use. So, now we know that this little machine can do what it's meant to do. Now let's see if we can engrave something a little less traditional, like a banana. <laughs> That's right, I'm gonna carve a banana and you can't stop me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the rubber bands on top of there. And I've also got this uhu putty that I'm going to stick down in between the banana and the build plate to help hold it in place. And hopefully the machine can still move around under the weight of this wonderful fruit. I hooked up my drawing tablet to the computer and the laser engraving software actually has this cool ability to trace out live what you're drawing on the computer screen. And when you click down, it'll actually turn on the laser, which means I can freehand some laser drawings. Pretty cool. Now, just as a warning, if you guys are gonna try something silly like this, it does not smell like sweet fried bananas. No, it smells more like, well, like a banana being lit on fire with a focused beam of light. Yeah, that's what it smells like. But hey, check it out. It totally worked. Well, I lasered a banana. What more can I do? Where can I go from here? <sighs> I guess it might be time to call it quits and end Make Anything channel. Nah, I'm just kidding. We can still laser apples, pineapples, toast and tortillas. The possibilities are endless. For the size and price, I think this Super Carvey laser engraver is pretty cool. On top of that banana, I lasered these really sweet dice. I really love how these came out, and the software that comes with this machine is actually super simple and easy to use, and I really like the live drawing function. That's really fun. As far as carving into these wooden objects, it was amazing, and the banana. The banana, it carves a banana. What more do you want? You got yourself a $90 banana carving machine right here. All right, well, that's it for today. I know some of you have really cool ideas of what else I can engrave with this machine, so make sure to leave that in the comments. And uh, until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired. Pew. Laser banana. <laughs>